in turn that we're going to have the opportunity to work with Frizzo, we was almost like flabbergasted and trying to comprehend that it was real. The Blade had planned to invite his manager for me, Chester, and him, or Lewis Parker, who didn't turn up, to come to the studio. We couldn't get hold of Chester that day, he couldn't get hold of Lewis Parker, um, so Blade still wanted one more MC. By the time I got to the studio, he explained this. So I sent for a very dear friend of mine, which is Mr. Tibbs. I kind of felt it was all very plastic and not really what we represented and we was almost in, ready to leave. Me and Tibbs was like, you know what, is it a fuck this? <laughs> fuck this, yeah, fuck this. And as we was leaving, a young engineer by the name of Choco, who I think was Riz's apprentice sound engineer at the time, kind of came and went, what's wrong with you guys? What, do you want to get the party started? Kick some speakers around, piss on the desk, what do you want to do? By the time Riz turned up, who truly is the abbot, you know, in in all respects and manners, he is the abbot. Um, and he came with an elder who was like a spiritual guidance and teacher of his. Um, and it was a big moment because when he came, he saw there was a vibe, you know. We sat, we reasoned, we talked. Wes would turn up to the studio, we penned our lyrics and we slammed it down on the beat. And it was a great moment and it was a great experience to work with someone like Rizza who's someone who I hold in such high esteem. We're in UK, to you that might seem rare. I'm stepping up now to make sure we're seeing clear. In every council estate we got pure talent. But no one don't care because we're seen as a challenge. So I suppose we'll never be the balance that you're looking. You want to dilute the realness and fling a hook in. Most A&R cats I've ever met was all shooken. I'm lost for words if they don't bring a checkbook in. I'm living in a place where you could get your life took in. For half-stepping by kids that will blast weapons. Pull up at the lights, they'll have you out in half seconds. Think you're rough, hang around if your arse reckons. Don't have to look for trouble, trouble it'll find ya. And don't turn around, it'll be right behind ya. Freestyling, it's me whiling, me whiling, London. Originally, I, I was covered my face, I was hit my face, I was originally with like that in pictures, and then I decided to use a bandana, and then the bandana was um, a normal bandana was too threatening, you know what I mean? It just makes you a gangster. Like, I needed to change it for something that was more striking, something that represented me, and so I used the Union Jack, and that image was striking for a lot of people. A, because it was the Union Jack, it was a flag and it said so much about a rapper carrying a Union Jack, you know, when, you know, America's, like, hip-hop is more American-based music. And also, I was a black person with a Union Jack around and that was, you know, that raised a lot of questions as well, as well within, you know, people, maybe in the white community and people in the black community. I've been about, I get about, I get a lot impressed. I get about, I bill about, I get a lot of press via Ben Harris from Hall or Nothing. I've won awards, more are coming, but a wall of nothing. Anyway, I'm a hustler, hustler. And I've been to hell and back, hustler, hustler. Instead of me selling crack, I'll put crack on CDs and sell that. And if I went gold, I'll still be in the cold trying to sell the plaque. People are staring at me like, I swear that's way. I'm like, yeah, but please don't stare that way. Stop looking in my face, give me my space. If you want to see me, you can take a look on my space. Peace. <laughs> 